Hi, welcome to BTBS. This is Jay. Today we will take a look at it OCP4 UPI installation on KVM. To use UPI method, basically I use this official documentation from Red Hat, especially bare metal part. So although I use KVM, it is almost the same as bare metal. To use UPI method, you need to set up a lot of stuff such as DNS, network, load balancer, match box, and so on. You can configure them all manually. But in order to explain this topic properly, I've developed Ansible and Terraform script. From this video, I will explain prerequisite and how you should configure it by manual or by automation. Here is agenda. First, we will see whole architecture of install system. Then we will check a prerequisite and how it work briefly. Next, OCP4 VM will deploy on KVM and it will start to deploy OCP4 by ignition config file. At last, we need to set registry storage to empty DIR to deploy OCP4 properly. Then OCP4 installation will be done. As I mentioned in the beginning, I have developed Ansible and Terraform script. Each script is responsible for a specific part. It is a little bit complex to understand, so I will explain it to you. Finally, I will share OCP4 command line to wait bootstrap and OCP4 installation. Architecture. I will use Fedora 28 as a base. This is OCP4 information that I use in demo. I will use one master, one worker node, but the script will take care of multiple nodes as well. We need to set up LB, the load balancer for router and master bootstrap on KVM and deploy matchbox server container and configure matchbox by Terraform provider. Update DNS masquerade configuration to reserve each VM, matchbox, load balancer, and so on. Lastly, we will use HTTPD Apache server to serve Red Hat CoreOS BIOS image. With this prerequisite, all OCP4 VM will be ready to deploy. So whenever OCP4 VM start up, it will interact with the Matchbox DNS HTTPD Apache server to deploy OCP4. For DNS Masquerade, I will use Network Manager 1. But if you have other DNS application such as Bind, you can configure it by yourself. Here is the record list you need to configure. There are several records API, API INT, apps, that is subdomain, bootstrap, master zero, worker zero, lb, matchbox, and etcd. If you want to use network manager for DNS like me, you need to change DNS parameters to DNS masquerade in the network manager com file. After you set up DNS, you have to check if these host names are reasonable. Network. This part will be done by Terraform script. In here, I use XLST to add boot P parameter in the libbert network. This is very important value to reach to match box when OCP4 VM first start. To deploy load balancer, I will use cloud init way. And it will be also done by Terraform. After VM is running, Ansible script will configure HA proxy. Here is the example of haproxy.cfg file. As you see, there are four pools HTTP, HTTPS, API, machine config server. After bootstrap is done to deploy OCP4, we will remove bootstrap from API and machine config server. 
Matchbox. I don't know how many people know about it. It is first time to use this Matchbox for me, but it is very useful tool to provision Linux. I use it as an IP server. Matchbox use two port. One is RPC and the other is for HTTP. gRPC protocol use HTTPS. So you need to generate a certificate to communicate with Matchbox server. Using Terraform Matchbox provider, each component, group, profiles, ignition, asset will be stored in bar lib Matchbox. If you are interested in Matchbox, please subscribe my channel and wait for next Matchbox tutorial. OCP VM. VM will start and reach to Matchbox then it will load kernel in it RMFS kernel parameters by specific profiles, which is matched by group. And VM download kernel in it RM file system ignition file first. Then it also download Red Hat Core OS BIOS image during OS is starting up. Followers, there are many Ansible and Terraform script in places. However, it is just tools, so you can configure everything manually. To use this script, you can do two ways, manual and jkit command line. This is a detailed explanation of whole floor. It explains each step and it gives you insight how you deploy OpenShift version 4 by UPI. However, if you don't interest in this, you can skip it. In each step, first, you need to update config file that will be used for Ansible and Terraform. Then several config files created to initialize cloud init data files will be created. Prep step. Prep step will use Ansible and Terraform together. Even inside the Terraform trigger Ansible script. First, it install necessary packages and configure DNS. Then generate OpenShift version 4 VM configuration and deploy load balancer. During deploying LB, it will generate Matchbox certificate, deploy Matchbox server, then configure Matchbox by Terraform provider. For deploying OpenShift VM, OCP VM module Terraform file will be created. Lastly, HA proxy will be configured. OCP step. After prep, it is ready to deploy VM and install OpenShift version 4. During OCP step, VM will be created and wait for bootstrap complete. And when bootstrap is completed, then we'll patch image registry storage to empty DIR. Then remove bootstrap VM from HA proxy backend pool. Now, what you should do is waiting until OpenShift version 4 installation is completed. This is jkit python command line. This command line script gives you several command lines to wrap up manual stuff. Most command lines is very straightforward to understand what it tried to do. Two command lines that I want to highlight is one shot and post. These two command lines contain all steps so you can deploy OpenShift version 4 from the scratch with this command line. This OpenShift installer command line is for your information. To check a bootstrap and OCP installation is completed, you can use these command lines. Demo. There is demo video and Git repository that contain all command line that I used for this demo. You can find the installation demo in my channel. So please subscribe this channel and see you next.